Mountain News first at four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. Before we get into our first alert weather day, we do have some breaking news we want to tell you about out of Corbin. We're getting word of a large fire at Bolton's Towing in Corbin. Fire crews are there at the scene. We don't know a lot about what's going on, what started the fire. No, there's no word of any injuries, but uh, uh, flames and smoke can be seen from quite a uh, ways away. Again, this is at Bolton's Towing in Corbin. We have a crew headed that way. And uh, there you see the map of where this is located. We'll bring you more information as we get it, including some uh, drone video that we've just received. Hopefully we'll be able to bring that to you very soon. But again, a large fire at Bolton's Towing in Corbin. We'll bring you more information as we get it. Now to weather. Rounds of showers and storms will make their way into Kentucky just in time for primary election day. Some of them could be severe. It's a first alert weather day. Meteorologist Evan Hatter joins us now with more on what to expect. Evan? Oh, that's right, Steve. This is a weather situation that's really kind of bubbled up in the last, oh, 24 to 36 hours. The model's really indicating now that potential for strong to severe thunderstorms with all modes of severe weather possible and heavy rain as we head into the day tomorrow. It's a first alert weather day out there for the day on Tuesday. Strong to severe thunderstorms possible really this time tomorrow night and into tomorrow evening. All modes severe weather possible. Damaging winds, heavy rain, a little bit of large hail and even yes, the possibility for an isolated spin up tornado. Overall, it's a level two slight risk for severe weather. Tornado threat again low, not as low as we've seen it recently, but not the main threat. Large hail threats also low. The big threat's going to be high winds in excess of 60 miles per hour and the potential for some localized flash flooding. This afternoon, we've already seen a few showers and storms in some spots. You see UVA wise, the campus there overcast in 70 parts of the region, though. Full sunshine, upper 70s to near 80 as you head toward Lake Cumberland, where we're struggling to get to 70 across the Big Sandy, where those showers linger at this hour into parts of Logan and Mingo counties in West Virginia, sneaking on into portions of Pike County there down 119 and watching a couple of more downpours there south of La Falla along Interstate 75 as you're headed between Jellicoe and Lake City there in parts of Campbell County. Forecast first, the next 12 hours, no weather issues other than those spotty storms tonight, and those are not expected to be severe. We slowly drop into the 60s, but that muggy air mass in place. Steve, I'll have the latest on that first alert weather day coming up in a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Evan. The Floyd County Long Term Recovery Group is one step closer to receiving grants to help flood survivors. The group is working to get the Community Development Block Grant to help people rebuild following the July flood. Floyd County Special Projects Director Missy Allen says this will allow for folks to get back on track. You know, it's not like getting an SBA loan or something like that. It's a it's an opportunity for our people to be able to get the the funding that they need to help them to get their homes um, back to where they need to be. Allen says the county is still in the process of uh, accessing grant money, but people can go ahead and sign up. Coming up at six, Allen talks about just how big of a deal this is for Floyd Countyans. Less than a week after the policy known as Title 42 ended, the situation along the southern border is much calmer than many expected. The pandemic era policy turned away migrants to help stem the spread of COVID. CBS's Skylar Henry has the latest from Washington, D.C. Significantly fewer migrants have been crossing the border from Mexico in the past two days. And U.S. officials say the 50% drop is evidence that their new rules are working. They have gone down. My hope is they'll continue to go down. We have more, a lot more work to do. The Biden administration is turning away anyone who didn't first seek asylum in a country they traveled through to reach the U.S. border. In addition, migrants caught crossing illegally will not be allowed to return for five years and can face criminal prosecution if they do. We've already removed thousands of people who have arrived at our southern border. But Republicans say the numbers are still unacceptable and that detention facilities in southern border communities are dangerously overcrowded, including this one in El Paso, Texas. There's over 6,000 people that are in custody. In this particular facility, it's meant to house 1,000 people. It's housing over 3,000. Just right. this week, there was a migrant child that died in HHS custody. President Biden and numerous local leaders along the border are calling on Congress to pass bipartisan immigration reform, but nothing has happened.
I think uh, this is not a uh, Democratic or Republican problem. It's an American problem. And things should have been, been done a long time ago. Even with border crossings going down, the union representing patrol agents says around 25,000 migrants were being held in U.S. Customs and Border Protection facilities. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. President Biden says he has no plans to visit the border anytime soon because it would be disruptive. Well, in case you didn't know, tomorrow is Election Day in the Commonwealth. Early voting ended on Saturday. And, of course, the race for governor is the biggest item on the ballot. Governor Bashir is expected to win in the Democratic primary easily. Twelve Republicans, though, are running for a chance to challenge him in November. Somerset Mayor Alan Keck is one of them. He's spending the 24 hours prior to Election Day campaigning across the state. Earlier this morning, Keck made multiple stops across the mountains. Those included stops in London, Manchester, Pikeville, and Jackson. WYMT's Olivia Calfee was there for his stop in Jackson and asked why he chose to campaign here in eastern Kentucky today. This is home. I mean, you know, Somerset and Pulaski County, we feel like we're a part of East Kentucky, even though we might not be in the mountains per se. Uh, this is my home turf. This is my home region. Uh, and so often people in Eastern Kentucky feel neglected or left out. I know specifically, you know, with the recent issues, that has been the case. They feel left behind. Uh, that's not going to be the case for me if I'm governor. Keck was scheduled to spend the afternoon in Moorhead and Bardstown. Another candidate for governor, Republican and State Auditor Mike Harmon, is also making stops in eastern Kentucky before Election Day. Harmon is touring multiple areas throughout the region. This is the fourth statewide race Harmon has run since getting into Kentucky politics, and he says faith has led him through the stress that comes with them. Any, any race that I've run, you run like it's up to you, you pray like it's up to God, and you just run hard. Uh, you know, it does prepare you. You know, I, in years past, I've had uh, lost my first two races for the House before I won the uh, State House. I was the first Republican from Boyle County to win that in 102 years. Harmon traveled through the Kentucky River Valley and Cumberland Valley. We'll have more on his preparation for Election Day coming up tonight at 6. And uh, many, the two many believe are the two front runners, uh, Daniel Cameron and Kelly Kraft, were not. Uh, campaigning in the mountains today, but they are definitely campaigning in other parts of the state. Well, parts of Canada are dealing with some out of control wildfires. The problem has become so bad that thousands of residents in Alberta are being forced from their homes. More than 19,000 people who live in that Canadian province have been ordered to leave. There are 87 wildfires raging across Alberta. Officials say unrelenting heat and powerful winds have made the fight difficult so far.